Well, let's get more on this now with Francisco Diego in London. He's a lecturer of physics and astronomy at the University College London. Really good to have you back with us, uh, Professor. Tell us, how significant is this discovery? What does it mean? Yes, it is very significant. It is uh, um, a way of producing radio waves that uh, was being um, theorized, but not exactly observed. Uh, so far, we have seen the mergers of, uh, of neutron stars, even mergers of black holes recently generating waves of uh, gravitational waves, and that was a major, major discovery. But in this case, we are looking at, uh, apparently, according to the models that uh, I am uh, uh, examining, it still looks like uh, we have two stars, which are the cores of dead stars, if you like. It's a white dwarf and a red dwarf star. The, the white dwarf is a, is a core of a, of a dead star, and the red dwarf is a just a small star, which happen to be in orbit around each other and generate a magnetic field, which is very strong. The white dwarf has a very strong magnetic field, and they orbit in, a, in such an angle uh, in the orbit that produces these radio waves that give the impression of, uh, if you like, of uh, uh, intelligent signals, because uh, these radio waves come uh, very periodically and uh, uh, for a, uh, two, uh, two hours uh, in, dur in duration, and they, they are very, um, uh, very precise. So it's a, it's a very interesting discovery, and I think it's uh, the first, I don't know, there are more prototypes, more samples of these of this, uh, pairs of stars, uh, which is actually the, uh, the two limits of what, what sterile evolution is, a very uh, dense, very uh, heavy star, which is the core of a dead star, which is the white dwarf, and then the red star, which is a, a normal star in a way, but very low mass. So it's a very low mass system that is generating these radio waves that was uh, not seen before. Yes, and I'm sure that uh, upon hearing the news that radio signals had been detected, I, I guess some people might have been prematurely excited about the prospect of those signals coming from uh, some other life form out there. But what are the implications of this discovery? Could it lead to perhaps uh, us detecting signals coming from potential uh, forms of life instead of uh, those two dead stars? Well, yes, we have a lot of uh, programs already, uh, the SETI program, the Search of Extraterrestrial Intelligence, and uh, radio telescopes, very powerful radio telescopes, looking at the sky all the time, scanning for signals. So, uh, but uh, yes, those are very powerful uh, 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 projects, and they haven't detected anything. There is a dead silence, a radio silence yeah, from, that, uh, from, from that respect. And I must remember the first time the pulsar was discovered in the 1960s, the pulsar, which is a rotating neutron star in the end, it turned out to be, it was thought to, 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 to be uh, signals from extraterrestrial intelligence. They call it the little green man. Very famously, um, uh, uh, Jocelyn Bell Brunel got the signals. She was a student and she got the signals and then she called them the little green, green man. And then, but they discovered other pulsars in other places and that, uh, that excitement came down by its own weight because we have so many other uh, natural explanations. And I think we are now in the, uh, in the case of another natural explanation, these very mysterious signals. And uh, on a slightly different topic, uh, also in space though, uh, Francisco, we know that uh, Elon Musk is pushing ahead with his plans to go uh, to Mars. Uh, he's hoping to perhaps not only learn more about the planet, but also uh, potential life forms on uh, that red planet. Uh, what do you make of uh, that attempt? Are you excited about that prospect as well? Uh, uh, well, uh, no, not really. Uh, in, uh, coincidentally, I, uh, we just finished our uh, Your Universe uh, Festival of Astronomy and uh, Planetary Sciences at UCL, and uh, uh, we were dealing with this in a panel discussion on Saturday afternoon about the, the possibilities of, uh, of going to Mars, and the idea was that we shouldn't go to Mars. There is plenty of evidence there uh, of life, of, of uh, ancient life. There may be plenty of evidence of ancient life on Mars, and we have to be very careful not to contaminate that evidence. So it was, has to be done in a very careful way. And I think these uh, plans of Elon Musk or, what, or whoever are completely out of, uh, out of uh, context. And I don't think really that they can do it anyway. It looks like it's a, it's a Cajalo, kind of a holiday trip to Mars. It is far more complex than that. We are nine months in a trip which is full of uh, solar radiation and full of uh, cosmic rays and all kinds of, of, uh, of problems that still have to be sorted out for, uh, for um, uh, human missions to Mars. 
So now we are uh, concentrating in uh, robotic exploration with very carefully sterilized uh, space machines, uh, space robots that uh, are ex exploring Mars. And certainly we are having uh, two or three uh, sample return missions from China, from the United States, from the NASA, from the European mission, all together to bring back uh, samples of uh, Martian soil and digging actually deep in the Martian soil to bring samples to look for uh, for extraterrestrial evidence of very primitive life. But I think uh, these plans of Elon Musk have to be put on hold right. and uh, it will take a long time. Interesting to hear about uh, that divergence in opinion when it comes to landing on Mars. Thank you so much as always, Francisco. Appreciate it. It's a pleasure.